Hello everyone and welcome to today's WSET Events Hub webinar. Thank you very much for joining us. This is the second one in our three-part series uh, in which WSET is collaborating with the Conseil Interprofessionnel du Van de Bordeaux. Uh, I'm very pleased to be joined by Sabine Silvestrini once again. Um, my name is Joseph Hallam. I work in the Europe, Middle East and Africa business development team. If you don't know anything about WSET, please do visit wsetglobal.com where you can find out all about the education and the courses that we provide on wine, spirits and sake. Uh, we are the organisation to go to to take you from beginner level right the way through to expert when it comes to the drinks, uh, the drinks trade and its products. A uh, great way to combine tasting skills with new great varieties to learn about different wine regions from around the world and how those wines are made. Um, so please do visit the website for more information. Um, as I said, we're joined once again by Sabine Silvestrini. Um, she is a third generation enologist and wine grower of Vinob uh, Villestri uh, Silvestrini. And uh, their winery consists of 36 hectares uh, on the right bank of Bordeaux. So three of the most prestigious app appellations in the Libourne. Um, so that's Lusac de Saint-Emilion, uh, Montagne Saint-Emilion and Pomerol. Uh, she's also an accredited Bordeaux educator as, as well with the Bordeaux Wine School. Uh, so without further ado, I will hand over to Sabine to talk you through the white wines of Bordeaux. Hello, I'm very glad to be with you today again. And uh, we're going to speak, of course, about the five facts every wine professional should know about whites in Bordeaux. Of course, I'm going to very uh, quickly introduce you to the Bordeaux vineyard just to focus afterwards on Bordeaux whites. Uh, I have a, a question further on for you, but just to um, remind you um, how things goes in Bordeaux and what kind of production we have, I've got uh, some key data for you. Just to remember that the, the, the vineyard is about uh, 110,000 hectares, which is pretty much uh, 271 acres. Uh, it's the largest AOC vineyard in France. I'm not saying about the largest vineyard in surface, but uh, because the, the largest one in, in France is the Languedoc Roussillon. But here in Bordeaux, we are meant to produce AOC's wine, wines from controlled um, appellation of origin. Um, the origin is very important for us. So we have about 65 appellations. And of course, we do produce two colors of grapes, either red grape varieties and white grape varieties. We talked about the, the red grape varieties last week. And, um, and, and about the different red wines and um, wines that we could make out of the, the red grapes. Uh, so the red wines represent about 85%. We're gonna focus today on the, uh, let's say 2% uh, of uh, sweet wine we produce. We're gonna also speak about the uh, dry white wine, which is pretty much about nine, 10 percent of our production. So let's remember that we have um, about 88 percent of red for 12 percent of white planted over the Bordeaux area. And uh, most of the estate here are still family run estates. It represents about 65 percent of the production. Uh, and uh, of course, um, when we speak about the family owned estate, to give you an idea, the average size is about 20 hectares. It's 19.8 uh, exactly, but it's about 20 hectares. So that's the, the most uh, important data that you should remember. Last thing important is uh, nowadays the vineyard is really um, uh, obviously uh, a vineyard which is engaged in uh, environmentally friendly approach. 
In 2021, we were 75% of the vineyard area uh, engaged in one of those certifications. You know the most important ones, such as the, the organic one, the, the HVE, the high uh, environmental value, which is very specific to the French market, but also um, biodynamic, the Terra Vitis with sustainable viticulture. So, about 75% of the vineyard is certified in Bordeaux. If we want to focus um, on white, I'd like you to answer that question to start with. Do you have a, a, an idea in uh, 1950s, what percent of the Bordeaux production was white? You have three answers possible. It could be 10%, 30%, and 60%. I'll leave you guess something. I can see a few answers and the right answer is 60 percent i know it seems amazing i just told you that um bordeaux was about uh, 12 percent of white grape varieties nowadays it's just because we had a huge frost in the 50s actually in 1956 and this huge frost uh, changed totally um the um, plantation over the bordeaux area so we switched from uh, a vineyard which was uh, with a majority of white grape varieties to a vineyard which is nowadays with a majority of red grape varieties. Um, but the first um, plantation and the, the most ancient properties estate that we know in the history of Bordeaux were producing white wines. Not especially dry whites, but we were really focused on sweet wines. If you look back to the 17th century with the, the Chateau d'Iquem, we know we can find in the history that the, the first late harvest was pretty much at that time, at that period. Uh, then of course, there was a development of this process and uh, it tended to become something very uh, traditional to wait for the noble road to settle on the grape varieties, uh, especially the Semillon, but we're gonna speak further on about the grape varieties. And, um, and uh, of course, um, the dry white appeared much later. In the 90s, um, there was a wonderful um, experiment done on how to um, mature properly and um, macerate properly the Sauvignon Blanc. Those uh, research were run by Denis Dubourdieu the professor du Bourdieu. And uh, thanks to his research, we understood how to run much better the Sauvignon Blanc. And we started to make Sauvignon Blanc that was much more ex um, expressive on the nose, much more vivid. And we also learned how to um, give some more mellowness to the Sauvignon Blanc. And it was a huge turn in the history of dry whites in Bordeaux. Um, now, we also have some studies uh, going on for the typicity uh, of the aromas in, in sweet wines, for example, thanks to the noble rot. Uh, so that's uh, the type of studies we could run at the moment. Of course, we're going to speak about those grape varieties for you to understand what is specific from um, those whites in Bordeaux. Let's um, switch to the following one and uh, just for you to know we have six grape varieties that are allowed in Bordeaux for whites the main wine used to be the Semillon then we used to have the Sauvignon Blanc and the Muscadelle I'm saying them in this order but nowadays the Sauvignon Blanc is the major grape variety we used to have much more Semillon because this is the major grape variety for sweet wines it represents pretty much about 80% of the blend in most of the sweet wines we produce here. Uh, but because we know so much more about the Sauvignon Blanc, now that the production of Sauvignon Blanc has increased a lot within the last 15 years, 20 years. And so the major grape variety in white now is the Sauvignon Blanc. So it's about 47% of the production. The great thing with the Sauvignon Blanc, it's, it's an early ripening grape. Uh, it has a lot of uh, freshness. The acidity is uh, very uh, crisp. 
and it go, gives very expressive notes, like on focused on uh, citrusy notes. It could be passion fruit. It could be mango sometimes, depending on how far we push the maturity. Then we also love the muscadel in Bordeaux. The muscadel is quite rare in France. It's really uh, something that you would find here in Bordeaux. We love the muscadel, uh, but it's a very tricky grape variety. So. Uh, it's a late ripening grapes. It's quite uh, sensitive to the frost. It's sensitive to the mildew as well. And so if you want to obtain great results with the muscadel, we definitely need to look, uh, look after it very carefully. So uh, lower the yield. But if it's the case, and if you reach the perfect maturity, the muscadel is just beautiful in terms of aromatic expression, in terms of... Uh, uh, body that we would give to the wine. It's very mellow, very soft. So we love the Muscadel when we are on good terroir to mature it properly. Uh, we also have three other grape varieties that are allowed for whites in Bordeaux. They are the Sauvignon Gris, which to my opinion is a great grape variety because it's a good mix between the Sémillon and the Sauvignon Blanc. We love the Sémillon for the, the very elegant uh, white flesh fruit, like peachy notes, like um, acacia notes. It's very flowery as well, and it's very round and elegant. So, and the Sauvignon Gris would be in between uh, the Sémillon with this elegance and the roundness, and uh, also the Sauvignon Blanc, because it could be quite vivid and, and acidic in mouth. So it's a good balance. And when we want to make 100% uh, uh, grape varietal, uh, the Sauvignon Gris is uh, a good solution for us. The Colombard and the Uni Blanc are two grape varieties that we still produce in Bordeaux, just because we're not that far from Charente, of course, because it's just at the border. We mainly have those grape varieties in Blaye Côte de Bordeaux, for example, or in, in some parts of the Entre de Mer as well. But those, those two grape varieties are, are much more planted in, in the Charente to make basis wines that will be used for the distillation. So for us, the iconic grape varieties are the Sémillon, the Sauvignon Blanc, and the Muscadel, but the Sauvignon Gris has a right uh, place at the moment. To understand why um, we used to produce so much dry white and why uh, we have, especially the whites, focused or located on between the two rivers, the Dordogne River and the Garonne River, and on the right bank of, of the Dordogne River, it's important to understand that if you want to keep the freshness in wild grape varieties, you definitely need some fresh soils. And where do we have fresh soils in Bordeaux? On either the right bank of the Garonne River or the right bank of the Dordogne River, because the left bank of the Garonne River is mainly gravels. The only white you would find on the gravel soils would be um, the Grave and Pessac Léonien appellation, which give wines that are um, very elegant, very full bodied, very, um, with a very good uh, aging potential as well. And of course, the very famous uh, Barsac and Sauterne appellation that are located on the left bank of the Garonne River. Apart from that, most of the whites that are produced either in dry whites or sweet whites would be on the right bank of the Garonne River, such as the Entre de Mer, the Cadillac Côte de Bordeaux, or in sweet, we could speak about Loupiac, Saint Croix du Mont, for example. And of course, on the right bank of the Dordogne River, with appellations such as Bordeaux, of course, but also Blaye Côte de Bordeaux, the Franc Côte de Bordeaux, for example, that could be uh, part of this white production. So we love the limestone soils, um, which keep the, the humidity and the freshness and the clay soils uh, to produce those white bread varieties. Something very specific to understand the sweet wines in Bordeaux. We only make sweet wines thanks to the Botrytis cinerea. You all know that the Botrytis cinerea is this um, uh, fungus that would settle on the berries, but according to the climate, it would have a totally different development. If the weather is like a traditional weather in most of the vineyard of Bordeaux, you would obtain what we call the the gray rot, which we don't expect at all, and we don't want to see on the berries. 
If the climate is uh, misty in the morning, warm in the afternoon, and quite windy, then the Botrytis cinerea would develop inside the berry instead of developing outside the berry and produce what we call the noble rot. This really, um, that's the gold of the Bordeaux vineyard, this noble rot, because all the liquoreux, so the very sweet wines we would produce, would make would be made, sorry, uh, exceptionally, uniquely out of this uh, noble rot uh, grape variety. So it is something that has been picked berry by berry, uh, very strict selection, just to make sure that we would have this specific dehydration of the berries and concentration of the berries thanks to the noble rot. Um, just to tell you further about the different styles of wine that we would obtain in Bordeaux when we talk about whites, uh, there are two great bookend styles, I would say, in, in dry whites. And, uh, and of course, um, the, those two styles would be either lively and fruity styles. Generally, uh, they are fermented and aged in vat. Sometimes we could have some... Um, some, I would just say, some batonnage, you know, so removing leaves, uh, even though in vat, just to give some roundness, but they would keep this freshness and this uh, acidity thanks to the, the container. They are usually focused on lemon, citrusy, grapefruit, and acacia notes. And um, we try to serve them between seven and nine degrees Celsius. Then you would have another style of dry white that you could find in Bordeaux. They would be much more structured, much more generous, maybe better to age as well. Ones that need some time to express, to develop on the nose. And um, those wines are mostly produced on gravel soils. Um, they would be either uh, fermented uh, or and uh, aged in, in full barrel. So that's a uh, um, that's an option. Lots of people would do at least the aging in oak with removing the leaves, you know, to make sure that to give more protein to the wine and have more mellowness to the wine. Most and most growers would also do the fermentation, the alcoholic fermentation in barrels, really to keep this richness, even though we know that uh, most of the empiromatic aromas and, and woody aromas wouldn't come during the fermentation, but just only uh, during the aging. That's something very important. But for the fermentation, the balance with the lees and the microoxidation um, in, the, in the pores of the, the wood would be very interesting to give some body and some roundness to the wine. So that's uh, something that is very specific from, from those wines. Then um, to of course finish with, uh, we have to speak about Bordeaux sweet wines. The sweet wines could be divided in two different categories, either the semi-sweet white wines or the sweet white wines that we called in French liqueurs. It's a matter of how much residual sugar you have in the wine. If you have less than 45 gram per liter um, of sugar, it's considered as semi-sweet wines. In this case, the grapes, could be, or the bunches could be picked full bunches. When in sweet wines called liqueurs, uh, to obtain a residual sugar higher than 45 gram per liter, they have to pick berry by berry or bit of bunches by bit of bunches. And any grapes picked have to be uh, with noble rot at different stage of the evolution, but has to be with the Botrytis cinerea and with what we call number uh, puri roti or noble rot. So that's something very important. It, it gives two different style of wine. The semi-sweet would be uh, concentrated in aromas, but quite fresh and still have acidities and very soft and easy drinking style of wine that you really enjoy for aperitif or on its own. With when the for the liqueur, of course, you have so much more concentration. You also get much more aromas coming from the evolution of the botrytis in the berry. And it's much more concentrated in mouth as well. So I wouldn't say sweeter because it's a matter of balance. And to obtain great liqueur, definitely we expect, we cross finger each year for the botrytis to settle on the semillon berries when the acidity is still 
sufficient because if you have, if it's an overmatured semillon, when the botrytis would settle on and dehydrate the berries, then you would get a wine that would be uh, too heavy in sugar and wouldn't have enough acidity to balance it. For us, the best vintages for sweet wines is when you succeed to keep this freshness and this acidity to balance the concentration due to puri roti due to the noble rot. Of course, what would we have with this kind of uh, wine? Uh, we always say that the local, you know, food and wine pairing works the best. We do produce some great oysters uh, along the coast in the Atlantic coast in the Bassin d'Arcachon, for example, for the sweet, for the, the sweet wines, it could also be an option. Everybody would think about the oysters for the dry white and it works perfectly with his, uh, the Entre de Mer, the, the, the dry white Bordeaux. But you should try also with some sweet wines. It's a very interesting uh, pairing. But of course, you ask anyone in Sauternes, they would tell you that the best food and wine pairing would be with the roasted chicken on the Sunday morning, that they are traditional uh, meal and it suits perfectly to sweet wines. I would say that uh, either for dry white or sweet wines, they, you can just enjoy them on their own. You know, That's how they express their their aromas and that's how they express their beauty. So I uh, truly think that you would enjoy the white ones from Bordeaux because we have a wonderful range of it. So thank you for um, joining us to this presentation. Sabine, thank you so much for sharing that snapshot of white wines in Bordeaux. It's a hugely complex topic, so many different wine styles, so absolutely fascinating. Um, I've got a few questions here from the guest today that I want to share. Obviously, it, it's very topical at the moment. A few people asking about the fires in the Bordeaux area, um, what the current situation is, and whether there's a risk also of smoke, smoke taint um, for the wines this year, potentially, what's what's the situation? Well, uh, so far we don't know about the, the impact in the vineyard. Uh, for sure, the fires uh, are huge. Uh, it's uh, for us, it's a, a disaster. Uh, I would say much more than for the taste of the berries. We're not too worried so far for the taste. Uh, the the fog is not everywhere, and it's not like uh, all the time. It's really down the south of the Gironde, and our department is huge. So even though you know the vineyard is large, um, the fires are quite away from the vineyard so far. Okay. Uh, and the good thing is that uh, there's almost no risk that the vineyard would burn because it, you know, it's still full of water. So the pine trees are burning, but not the, the, the vines so far. For the taste, it's still too early to say, we'll see. The only thing I could say that it, it's going to be, um, it's going to have a huge impact on the climate, for sure. You know, this pine forest is for us a, a natural uh, wall against the wind coming from the south. So definitely, we know that it's going to change the face of the, the, the microclimate down the south of the, the Gironde. How? We don't know yet. You know, we're still... Um, it's a bit like a, a war situation for us here. Uh, there are firemen still, still fighting a lot. So we just okay. really cross finger. The, to us, uh, so far, the most important is to preserve people and preserve, you know, the people that are working to try to, you know, stop those fires. It's Absolutely. Terrible. And uh, yeah, thoughts and best wishes go, go to the whole region. Um, I, I guess on a related question to that, if you don't mind, it, does that... Um, is there any prospect with temperatures increasing in the vineyard area that that new varieties or certain varieties become more popular to plant because there are these warmer conditions and the traditional ones are less suited to it? Is, is there any discussion about that? Well, actually, we, we talked about some of those grape varieties last week, uh, talking about reds, but that's right that we have six new uh, grape varieties in experimentation at the moment in Bordeaux. We started to plant them in uh, 14, so they've been allowed in the cahier des charges in the in the regulation for the um, 2021 AOC Bordeaux and Bordeaux Supérieur only. 
just to understand that the people who were involved in this experimentation, uh, of course, they used some of their land to plant those new grape varieties. And at some stage, especially because now the vine is starting to produce quite uh, like regularly, they have to be able to use those new grapes in, in their vines. They have to, they can use those grapes at the maximum of 5%. It's okay. just a, a grapes that we are experimenting to see how we're going to succeed with some new disease that we could have. Like we have lots of wooden disease that are quite, uh, you know, more and more present in Bordeaux. But there's much more consideration on how to run maybe differently the vineyard. So we could preserve our own grape varieties, our traditional grape varieties, such as, of course, the Sémillon and the Sauvignon Blanc. That's our main focus. Um, but then it's much more a matter of how we're going to um, manage the canopy, for example, how we're yeah. going to manage the, the, um, the weeds in, in the field or in between the rows, for example, so the, that the cover crop, you said. So it's something that we're working a lot on. Not that we want to change the, the profile of Bordeaux wines, but definitely we want to keep this profile and make sure that it wouldn't be too high in alcohol or too yeah. overmatured, for example. So, uh, of course, there's a lot of experiment at the moment, but we, we are focusing more on the viticulture and how to adapt to That's this right. new weather condition. Just remember that we have clay and limestone soils, and that for us is really precious. Uh, it's much easier to preserve freshness and humidity in clay and limestone soils than in gravel soils. It's yeah, of course. It's precious for us. Great. Fascinating on that. Um, if it's okay, I think we've got time probably just for one more quick question. This one's come in from Daryl, um, and he's asked, how many of the AOCs in Bordeaux allow white wines? Are, are most of the white wines labelled as AOC Bordeaux, or how is it? Well, share. basically, just for you to uh, understand, the Bordeaux white AOC could be produced anywhere. So that's what you have to remember. So regarding this, uh, wherever you're located in Bordeaux vineyard, you are able or allowed to produce dry white Bordeaux, the AOC dry white Bordeaux. But then, of course, apart from that, some of the AOCs would have their own AOC for dry white, like the Entre Deux Mer, like Pessac Léonien, like Grave, for example. So uh, basically, if someone wants to produce, and it is already the case, you might know those wines, uh, a, a dry white in Margot or a dry white in Pomerol, of course, they have the right to do it. But the only AOC they could use is Bordeaux. But apart from that, so it means that you could find dry white Bordeaux on any kind of terroir all over the surface. But of course, we have also some communal or sub-regional appellations that are really dedicated to dry white, such as the Entre de Mer, which is the biggest one. Okay, the only way to know is to open it up and taste it, I guess, there and, you go. Uh, and see what's <laughs> there. Good, well, uh, that is all for today's session. I just want to thank uh, the CIVB and of course, Sabine in particular for today's session. Um, this is number two in a series of three. Next week, we're going to be looking at Cremont, so that's sparkling wines, and Rosé from Bordeaux, something you might know nothing about in relation to Bordeaux, so definitely tune in for that. That's the same time, the same place next week, so make sure you sign up for that. This um, webinar will be emailed out to you as a link all of our past webinars on the Events Hub are available through our YouTube channel. So please check out the whole back catalogue there, including last week's session that was on red wines of Bordeaux. So please have a look at that. If you are interested in WSET courses and interested in signing up, please head to wsetglobal.com and our Where to Study page in particular. Uh, so that's all from us. Thank you so much again to Sabine and Thank hope to see that. you all again soon. See you. Bye. <laughs> Bye.